Trump is talking about the collapse of the dollar followed by the loss of world standard status. And Saudi Arabia has made an important decision through which there could be a new crisis. What does Bitcoin have to do with it? Let's get to the bottom of it. Sensational news broke online about Donald Trump's arrest. Later, it turned out that the procedure was formal, and he was actually arrested before being charged because protocol dictated it. That night, Trump was free again and went to the press, but refused to comment on the claims of the court and instead made a sensational statement about the fate of the U.S. currency. He was accused of 34 cases of falsifying business documents in order to conceal compromising information about himself during the presidential campaign of the 2016th year. That is, being already a presidential candidate, Trump paid people money to keep quiet so that they wouldn't disclose information that could tarnish his image. One such case involved paying a porn star not to tell anyone about their heated relationship. Such a crime is not considered a serious crime, but in special cases, there is criminal responsibility for it given that the American judicial system sums up the terms for each violation of the law, then in theory, Trump could face more than a hundred years in prison. The next preliminary hearing will take place on December 4th, and the trial itself will begin as early as next year, 2024. What Trump has stated, he predicts the collapse of the dollar, which will lead to the loss of its status as the world's reserve currency. And this in turn will be the biggest defeat for the United States in the last 200 years and will lead to the loss of its superpower status. Is Donald right? And how bad is it really? It is important to understand that first and foremost, Trump wants to regain the presidency. So he can promise anything now. We've already heard about ending the war in Ukraine in one day. And if he has to, he will also promise to colonize the moon in a week. Remember that a politician's statements are always aimed at getting votes. And then there is absolutely no need to fulfill these promises. It is much easier to come up with an excuse why things did not work out. My point is that Republicans are now criticizing Democrats for their misuse of the budget, pointing to the enormous spending that has run up inflation, but they somehow forget that the Federal Reserve's printing press issued $5 trillion between the years 2000 and 2021, and $3 trillion were printed in year 20, when Trump was still president. And yes, it was Donald, we have to thank, for Bitcoin at 69000 in year 21, because he was the one who gave the Fed the command to print dollars in unlimited amounts, just to prevent a financial crisis during the election campaign which would certainly have had a negative effect on his ratings. And I've been following the events surrounding Trump's arrest because it's important now to see how much weight his trial will carry during the political battles over the national debt ceiling. Congress only has two months left, and they will either vote to raise it or have to default on the U.S. No one is seriously considering the latter option yet. For the markets, the main threat is how long politicians will compromise, and what I saw yesterday seems to me to indicate that Republicans will not fight exactly for Trump and his reputation. Consequently, the government debt decision will not be complicated by this factor, which for risky assets, and therefore Bitcoin, is a good short-term prospect, and we can continue to pay full attention to the Fed's rate decisions. This is where the surprises may be. And to get to the bottom of them, we need to go to the second part of the video and discuss Saudi Arabia's unexpected decision to significantly cut oil production before the end of the year. Click on the like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos and keep going. Brent oil is again more expensive than $80. Saudi Arabia and OPEC set up Bitcoin and not only it, because they made an unexpected decision to cut oil production from May of this year and keep it in place until at least next year. Several countries will participate in the reduction in production. These are the United Arab Emirates, Iraq, Kuwait, Kazakhstan, Algeria, and Oman. In total, the market will miss more than a million barrels per day. This is a blow primarily to the United States and the European Union, which have just seen the beginning of a decline in inflation. After all, in many respects, it was associated with expensive energy resources. That is why the United States opened up its reserves and sold oil until the prices on the market were brought down below $80. That's just such a policy as good for buyers of oil, and not for its sellers. Now we are getting a trend towards a new increase in energy prices, which may provoke a return of inflation. That is, 
the Fed needs to continue raising rates much more when the banking system is bursting at the seams. The only hope is that the American economy will go into recession ahead of schedule, and then it will be possible to move on to easing monetary policy. But the latter is also bad for financial markets because it would mean lower demand. And this is a drop in income, bad reports, and the sale of shares. And if it comes to a panic sale, then everything will collapse at once, as it happened during previous financial crises. It is also interesting that with this decision, the Saudis also framed China, with which they now seem to intend to be friends, and even through mediation, almost made peace with Iran. China's plans for a quick economic recovery largely depend on cheap oil. Only Russian oil is not enough. Besides, it recently became sanctioned and, as a result, cheap. So China had friendship with Iran receiving cheap oil from it. If you like conspiracy theories, then I do not exclude that the Saudis could agree on a decision to reduce oil production with China, promising them in return to establish new channels for the supply of cheap Iranian oil at the expense of their resources. In this case, it turns out that China and Saudi Arabia really play on the same team, and this is another step towards the end of the era of the petrodollar. But this will not happen tomorrow, or in a year, or even in 10 years if only for the reason that the U.S. itself is a big seller of oil. I'll say more. The actions of oil-producing countries may have a completely different interest. It is not important for them to sell oil for dollars or yuan. They are more afraid of the absence of a buyer on the market. But this is exactly what the U.S. Fed is doing now. They are raising rates in order to reduce demand, which is pushing America and the whole world into a recession. And it is already on the way, as the Deutsche Bank indicator tells us. Take a look at this chart for yourself. There's been a recession six times in a row after it's gone over 90%, and it's happened again. It may very well be that the Saudis do not care about dollars and its status as a world reserve currency. They are much more worried about the sharp drop in demand, and therefore they began to reduce production volumes in advance. This whole story around the future of the dollar and the U.S. default plays into the hands of gold, which is at the maximum price values. Now look at the next chart. Bitcoin has finally started to lose its peg to the 500 SNP and has reached the highest correlation with gold in its history. Could this be a chance when Bitcoin moves from risky assets to protective ones? Personally, it seems to me that so far this probability is small, but I could be wrong, especially when the numbers show that the gold correlation is making new highs. Thank you for watching. I will keep you updated. Your cryptocurrency.